are back from our short commercial break. My name is still Valentine, and we are still on set with two very, very, very amazing, I want to say personalities. They've transcended from being people. Now they're just personalities. And if you have not been listening to us or if you just joined us on the show, that's fine. I'm quite sure that my ABLE team will put it up on a link on YouTube. But in case you need us to introduce ourselves one more time, I'll allow them to do that, Professor. Hello, my name is Natalie Frederick Pierre. Mm -hmm. I'm a professor of history at Howard University in the United States, mm -hmm. and I immigrated to the U.S. from Haiti as a toddler. Mm -hmm. And you are, sir? My name is Nico Guto. I was born in Kenya, mm -hmm. but now based in New York City. Mm -hmm. I'm the founder and the executive director of Safari Yangu International, mm -hmm. which was birthed, incubated, and stationed at Columbia University in New York City. Okay, so now for the sake, because I just had to explain to them this conversation could last forever. There's just so much to know, so much mind-boggling information going on over here, but just hopefully two questions, <laughs> well, at least for me. And I'd like to start with you, Nick. So uh, you are basically an activist for, for the black people outside or even just over here, you know, you care about our rights and all these. And we just mentioned, or as you know, last week, His Excellency, the President, did a little reshuffle of his cabinet administrative secretaries. Now, what caught my eye is now Dr. Alfred Mutua, once again, from Foreign Affairs, which is very, very important for this conversation because we are talking about foreign affairs. So so he uh, went on social media and claimed that, I think he had gone somewhere, he had traveled abroad and then came back and then went on social media and said, oh, in Canada there, there, are, available, there are jobs and things like that, there's just special for Kenyans, so please just get ready, let's go. And then enters the Immigration Refugee Citizenship of Canada, the IRCC, and they said this disinformation is circulating which suggests special programs are welcoming Kenyan immigrants and this is false. The immigration program programs referral don't exist. What kind of picture has that painted in itself? Thank you for asking for that question. <laughs> because th th actually that, that's mm -hmm. really the main reason why we organized this conference this mm -hmm. past Friday. Mm -hmm. um, one, because of misinformation mm -hmm. and missing information. Mm -hmm. we, 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 we read in the newspapers every day and watch on TV how Kenyans and Africans lose money uh, through these many agencies mm -hmm. that are purporting to take you abroad, mm -hmm. right? So um, our main mission was actually to bring experts in these areas, right? To come and give free information. One thing we can agree on is that we are not going to stop Kenyans or Africans from traveling abroad, mm -hmm. looking for opportunities, right? We are human beings. God gave us legs to walk. Mm -hmm. So we are going to walk across the world. Mm -hmm. Right, this boundary has never existed 2,000 years ago, mm -hmm. right? The, created by human beings. That means I can't be here, I can't be in the U.S. tomorrow, mm -hmm. right? So this information, we are trying to plug that gap that exists mm -hmm. between the right information and the people, mm -hmm. linking them to real opportunities. We don't link people to opportunities as Safari Yangu International, mm -hmm. but we avail the information. Mm -hmm. Like for example, if uh, somebody is done with high school in Kenya mm -hmm. and is looking for higher education opportunities, for example in the US or in the UK mm -hmm. or in Canada, when you go into the internet, there are thousands and thousands of schools. Mm -hmm. This can be really daunting and overwhelming for a young person mm -hmm. or f for the parents who want good opportunities for uh, their children, mm -hmm. right? So we help you narrow it down. Mm -hmm. we, we help you, you see and I identify the things that you need to look for in a school. Mm -hmm. uh, she's a professor, she'll even help me with this. Mm -hmm. There's certain, you need to look at what programs you want. You know, uh, some of the schools are not even accredited. Wow. So you have to make sure you're going to the right school. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, some of these schools have got very beautiful websites. Mm -hmm. You know, v you can build a beautiful website, get really nice testimony on it. You will never know. Mm -hmm. You will never know. It's um, an evil school covered in, in a white wall, you know, mm -hmm. as they put it. Mm -hmm. So as, as an organization, we help you narrow it down mm -hmm. so that you can uh, access some of these opportunities. Mm -hmm. For example, if you see online that there are jobs in Canada, there are jobs in Australia, mm -hmm. you, you can come to us, we can check it up mm -hmm. and 
if we have that capacity and we have the right information about that agency, mm -hmm. maybe in Australia or in Canada, mm -hmm. we'll be able to look it up and tell you, hey, this is a good opportunity, go ahead mm -hmm. and apply. Mm -hmm. And we can see this is how to apply for it, mm -hmm. right? If there's any red flags, we'll be able to inform you. Mm -hmm. So what, what we try to actually create in Africa or in Kenya right now, if to have a membership, so if we get in contact with any opportunity abroad there, we can actually mass email it to, our, uh, mm. to people mm -hmm. and they can follow it in their own way. Mm -hmm. You make your own decision. We don't charge for that. If you're a member, we'll be able to get that information. Oh, wow. Because mm -hmm. there are lots and lots of opportunities, as I told you. Mm -hmm. um, even among the global black population, mm -hmm. there's a lot of resources, a lot of skills that within us mm -hmm. that we can share. Mm -hmm. You know, like on the conference on Friday, Saturday, I was saying the speakers were black people. Mm -hmm. The organizers were black people. Mm -hmm. This is I, 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 in a black country. This is black excellence. Mm -hmm. Assembling in Nairobi, wow. mm -hmm. we need to uh, be able to appreciate that we can get opportunities from our own black people, not mm -hmm. only Mzungu. Mm -hmm. Yes, it was an entire black-led uh, um, conference mm -hmm. and a lot of information was shared mm -hmm. and a lot of people were happy. We were able to bring different schools into Nairobi, like. Columbia University. Columbia University has never done this before. Wow. They've never gone into public trying to reach out to people. You know, it's an Ivy League school mm. and people go to there. I, I did my graduate studies there and when I applied, almost a half a million people applied mm -hmm. and they took almost just a thousand. Mm -hmm. So you can see how competitive it is to go to that country. So to convince them to come into a public space mm -hmm. explaining the programs that they do it's a lot of work mm -hmm. and that's some of the things we do as an organization to talk to these schools convince them please come and explain your your programs to the public mm -hmm. that's what we do okay wow and, and as a professor how does that kind of spill over into that i think i think that i'll, I'll just add so for students who are applying to college one of the most important things are your letters of recommendation and as someone who has worked on admissions committees in my capacity as a professor, sometimes the letters of reference are too vague. You want to be alive in your documents. Mm -hmm. And my recommendation to students who are trying to get education abroad is to be very strategic about who it is that you ask for a letter of recommendation. And um, it, it, it would be better for you to have a letter of reference from your pastor than a famous person in Kenya. Wow. Because your pastor can speak to your character. They can make you very alive mm -hmm. in the letter. Mm -hmm. So that's what I would add to everything that Nick just said. Uh, kind of human, uh, humanizing the person who is applying. Mm -hmm. Because w once, the, for example, the grades are graded in A, B, C, D, or 4.0, 3.4. Those are figures, those are not human beings. Mm -hmm. So when you write your story, when you tell it, you're trying to humanize those grades. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because our Kenyan education system, we focus so much on the grades, but not the person. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Although they're trying to move past that, so we're not having the 844 anymore, now we have the CBC, the which is... I hear that. It's been very <laughs> stressful. It's experimental. That's yeah. why it's very experimental. So we're just waiting to see the first batch, but come out wonky like a pancake, like the first pancake. So yes, exactly. Hopefully the rest. Hopefully the rest. All right. Now my second and hopefully last question, guys, bear with me, is now we're talking about the police coming into or the being deployed into Haiti, and how is awareness going to help us as people? How how is telling the Kenyan people or the Haitian people that you know what this this is not uh, something that was opened up to the grand public this is not something that went on debate that it was voted for this is not something mm -hmm. this has kind of happened we also found out by the way like you found out we just saw it on the news and they oh we really are okay I don't know what that means but okay all right so mm -hmm. how, how does creating awareness help us remain Amicable. Absolutely. Um, I'm an educator, so knowledge is power. So the more Kenyans are aware about what's being done in their name, they can publicly say, not in our name. And social media is a very powerful democratizing uh, force. I encourage Kenyans who are listening 
to look up the hashtag hands off Haiti mm -hmm. so that they can see what conversations Haitians have had around the various occupations that we have endured and that they can put their voices in it because when these officers get wounded in my country there needs to be a public outcry mm -hmm. because you all did not vote for this and you want to be as public as possible particularly for members of the african diaspora mm -hmm. who are watching it is one thing to be the kenyan government mm -hmm. but it's something to be the kenyan people mm -hmm. and on social media the kenyan people can make it very clear we don't want this and also you all have a very thriving civil society right op eds mm -hmm. um with the cameras just simply say this is not what we want mm -hmm agitate to your local legislators. I know that even in the US that doesn't often work, mm -hmm. but you want evidence that you resisted mm -hmm. this happening under your name. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay, now for the sake of time, maybe I'll just give you a minute to, you know, just give a sentiment or two on the uh, current topic. On My sentiment? Yes, please. Well, um, my my heart breaks for the Haitian people mm -hmm. and the Kenyan people because this is not where we want to be as towers in the African diaspora. And the final thing is, um, my understanding is this government's term ends in 2027. And I want everyone here to remember so that we can vote, that you all can vote differently. Mm -hmm. Although that would be history being made if a government only just went on one term. But anything is possible, anything guys. Is possible. Anything is possible. All right, Nick, what would you like to say? So I want to tell Kenyans that um, as a black immigrant advocate in the USA, uh, I see the challenges Haitian people face when they're trying to get into the United States, when they're trying to cross the border, mm -hmm. uh, and how they're treated. They're treated as poor people, poor black people, uh, very violent people. They're given that label when they arrive at the borders. And even when they cross in, they're treated very, very different fr from other um, uh, populations of, of immigrants. While Haiti is a very rich country, mm -hmm. with rich in the people, in the history, uh, they've done it 220 years ago. Mm -hmm. They did it. Mm -hmm. They liberated other countries. And these are black people. Mm -hmm. These are African people. And Kenyans, you've done this before. Mm -hmm. You've come together as a people to stop government from doing certain things. Mm -hmm. This is your time. Mm -hmm. Come together. Use every single uh, platform you have. It could be in your church, mm -hmm. on the streets on Facebook, on TikTok. Mm -hmm. Hey, I'm talking to the TikTokers now. Mm -hmm. Please, this is an issue that you need to put at the forefront. Mm -hmm. Let's build that power from the grassroots. Talk to our leaders and make the government change their mind. Mm -hmm. Yes. All right, thank you so very much, Like, Really do have to wind this up. It has been such an honor to hear both of you. Your can we ha have a conversation after this? Yeah? Absolutely. Definitely. Okay, guys. Meanwhile, remember the hashtag to of today is yes, uh, MCM. That's Fan Crush Monday. That's why in the morning, but we just learned a new hashtag. Hashtag, hands off Haiti. All right. So keep it here. We will be with Brian Sockwell 101 after this.